here we have the reactor. I wanted to show you the process of using this. I got a bag of plastics over here. Most of these plastics in this bag, they're LDPE, low density polyethylene. So it's as simple as load in the plastics. All types, really. Some cardboard in there as well. Hmm. Christmas packaging and stuff. So it's kind of mixed. Usually I like to do just one type of plastic at a time. So that way I can, you know, look at the results and account for it and be like, oh, okay. So LDP produces this much gas, this much fuel, whatever, but, you know. Obviously, right now, it's not what we're doing. Now, you don't want to fill this thing up all the way to the top because you don't want it touching the actual lid. Because since the microwaves are coming from the top of the lid, if the lid touches the plastics, it doesn't have a weird thing where it basically just kills the, the magnetron, the thing that makes the microwaves. I don't know how it works, but... You just, you, so you don't want to fill it all the way to the top, but you can, you know, you can compress the stuff down. If you, if these were shredded, it would be a lot easier. Um, so, all right. So let's just say we fill it up that much. We could do more, but after that, you gotta put the catalyst in there. So this catalyst I'm using over here, it's just carbon from previous reactions. So there's still some stuff that might be a little bit unburnt because I. I didn't complete the reactions because it started raining, but now that's it. You just put that catalyst in there, just fill it up, a nice thick layer. And what the catalyst will do is it will, the catalyst will help the gas and oil formation, but it will also help heat it up quick because the catalyst will absorb a lot of microwaves really quickly and get very hot. So now we just put this uh, the lid on. Get it up. Put the lid on and now we have to get the, the nuts and the bolts to go in there. So quite a few of them. It's about I guess eight or something like that. Some multiple of four. Um, guess that makes it it's either 8 or 12 but I'm pretty sure it's just 8 so now we got to do that so I'll do that real quick so I got all the, the screws and nuts on the nuts and the bolts and it is really important to tighten them down really well because the gasket needs to be compressed to be really make a good seal and any leaks will be very harmful to the reactor to you and to the environment just because there's a reason why, you know, even in crude oil, right? Like crude oil on itself is, is carcinogenic. But then how is gasoline not carcinogenic? Because they're able to clean it up before it gets out there, right? So I like to see that as like what we're doing here. We're producing almost like crude oil level stuff, which on its own may be carcinogenic. But once it's cleaned up, you can take those carcinogenic properties and create useful things out of them. And then also get a product that is toxin free or at least diluted enough to be toxin free. So, got the screws and nuts on. Now we need to plug it up to the, um, the generator here, the high voltage generator. So you see the magnetron itself is over there. Just plug in these leads over right there. One, two, it's AC, so it doesn't matter which configuration. Put the ground clamp the ground ring around the screw. Um, and th these are just taut, they're, they're connected to the fan. So that's all they stand for. Um, I usually have a cover one between them so they don't short, but I guess I kind of lost that and you will find it. Usually they don't short just like that. They just stay like that, but you know, it's not good practice to just have them out. So now yeah, just take this and you plug it in to the, the generator itself. 
kind of beat up right now but you know it does its job same thing positive negative well ground and then take these fan leads and then they, they just go into this thing i need two hands to do it to so give me a second Let's see if i can set this up All right, so you got everything plugged up now. And now, the last step I like to do before I really like turn this thing on is I like to run some argon into it. Now, this is a mix of argon and carbon dioxide because I use it for my welder. But really, any type of thing like argon or nitrogen or carbon dioxide can be used because what you want to do is you want to flush all the oxygen out, right? So I have this port here. Uh, I'll open it. And you run it in there, you flush the the, um, the oxygen out. And also it was a good way to test for leaks because you can, you know, spray something around here, see if bubbles form, or you also can hear leaks kind of squeezing out if there are like some major leaks. So that way you're not leaking the actual bad stuff, right? Stuff you don't want to be leaking. But on top of that, um, this gas will also act as a carrier gas, meaning it will help push the the pyrolysis gas out because i have the pyrolysis gas running to a bubbler and stuff and sometimes it doesn't have enough pressure to run on its own so i open that port now you open this port this is the out the exit port so then i i run this nitrogen or this argon inert atmosphere you hear it running so now it's going in there you can kind of hear it coming out of here i guess if i turn it up a little bit you will So yeah, now that's running, nice and good. And now we're gonna go ahead and plug this up soon. It doesn't take long for this argon to flush all the oxygen out because this reactor is pretty small. So by now, probably most of the oxygen is already out. So by the time I go in and I plug this up, uh, most of it will be out. Um, best and most important reason to use the argon to flush it out first is because if you have leave oxygen in there, that little bit of oxygen, it will get out as the gas is produced, of course. But that little bit of oxygen will react with the gas and it will form the oxins. Just like if you be burn just plastic out in an open fire. So it will do that for like the first literal like five seconds. But, you know, over time that will add up and you are polluting the environment. And also the oxins don't have any fuel content to them because they've already been combusted. So it's just, it's like, why not? Let's turn this thing on now. Alright, so it's on, and the thing about microwaves is they work very, very quickly. As you can see, literally just seconds after we turn it on, gas is already being produced, which basically means the plastic is already being broken down that quickly. Now, obviously this is just going out into the atmosphere right now, we don't want that. So I have designed a filtration system and bubbler system right here. It's been running for a little bit. And basically the gases go from this pipe here into this system which has steel wool in it. So that will help filter out any sulfur products. And it goes up this channel. And then it goes into here which has a filter which is zeolite and activated carbon. And then it goes from there down here into this which is a, um, full of clay. Pretty much kitty litter. And that pretty much will take out any moisture which will help it burn better. So now there are some gases coming out the top. You can hardly see them because they're so clean, but when I take a flame to it, look at that. Nice. That's what we like to see. So I believe if I can have this system with a water bubbler as well, it will be absolutely ideal because the water bubbler will be a, like, well, the water bubbler will come before the clay. So that way any water vapor that gets in the, the um, gases from bubbling through the water will get dried out by the clay. And then it'll go into the clay, right, after it goes through the water, which will do the final clean, clean up the smell, blah, blah, blah. Which, you know, by the way, when this clay gets spent up and gets full of just not good smells, it can go into the reactor itself, get cleaned up. And after that, the gas will be completely clean. You see, already is really good, flammable. It's already a, a really clean flame, but, you know, there probably are a couple acidic properties in it just because, um, you know... There was water. Um, the water was not able to, to dissolve any like CO2 or any potential 
acidic substances because there was no water bubbler so we want to have a water bubbler along with this and then this will be absolutely ideal right so i built just a little mechanism here this is basically just like almost a torch just to test the flow of the gases as you can see this is the cleanest we ever got them they're almost completely clear watch how flammable they are look at that imagine that flame with just a little bit more oxygen in it that's a propane flame there pretty much perfect so imagine we can condense the oils out of the reactor properly instead of having them reflux back in so we can collect the oils and then we have this too and imagine if this flame right here is what runs the refinery to refine the oils so then now you get what I, where I'm going so now the oils are refined for free pretty much because it's the flame coming off of it that's refining them and now you have refined oils that you can put directly into your car. We had to build a distillation tower or, or uh, um, what do they call it, a distillation column to fractionally distill it. When the reaction is complete, I unplug the cables, turn everything off, I let it sit for like 30 something minutes minimum, 45 usually, just so that way any residual fumes get out most of the heat gets out you know dissipated and you know it's pretty much safe okay so this has been sitting i went ahead and i undid all the, the nuts and the bolts turned it off um unscrew the the system the, the filtering condensing system whatever another thing you can do is you can flush it with argon and see if there's any like smoke being produced or gases coming out and that's a way to test to see if it's still so too hot so anyway we have it, um, and I just, you take the lid off. I want to design a little arm for the lid, so that way, you know, like it kind of just keeps it held up. And you see, that's what it looks like on this side. Now, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but there is a lot of oil on this lid, okay? Like, can you see that, like, drop right there? Like, there's a lot of oil. Um, there's the waveguide cover, have which is a mica sheet with uh, some JB Weld extreme temperature. You can kind of see the oil dripping down there. You see it, like, I touch it or whatever. Like, look at all that oil dripping down. So what I assume is happening is a lot of this oil is getting reflux condensed into the reactor because the outlet port is on the side. So it wants to travel up. And by the time it travels up this lid, it steals all the, the heat energy and it just condenses it right here, which is kind of not what I want, even though refluxing is cool because it does give you higher gas production if I ever want to actually collect the oils, my oil yield will either be extremely low or no. So, now here's the inside of the reactor. As we can see, you saw what I put in there before. You look what's all that's left of it. Now this, this has been after about four hours. So every batch, well it really depends on the type of plastic you put in there. Plastic bags are pretty much the fastest thing. Where are my other gloves? Okay, whatever. Plastic bags are pretty much the quickest thing. They take about four to five hours, really, depending on how much you just compress them and put them in there. But as you see, the reaction was very nice and clean. The carbon product is very consistent. You know, they're not really granules right now. You break them up, they surely will be. Let's just break them up a little bit. Just, I like to just go through it just to make sure, you know. Actually, there's some plastic up under there. So it wasn't a complete reaction. So you see, sometimes that happens, the very bottom. The stuff at the very bottom sometimes has trouble breaking down as quick as the stuff on top because the microwaves are shooting from the top, right, and they're going down in there. Um, and when they do that, it only is hitting the stuff at the top and even when the plastic on top degrades, it starts to absorb the microwaves because, you know, it becomes carbon and carbon absorbs microwaves. So the plastic at the very bottom it usually takes the longest to break down because it's pretty much reliant on the heat on the top going down but you know heat travels up so that is the biggest issue with this reactor um the biggest flaw i guess you could say which it can be fixed really through experimentation and observation like i want to do a test where i put the catalyst you know how i put it on the top i want to put the catalyst just on the bottom like a bed um another way is different orientations of the magnetron. 
maybe the magnetron could be underneath it. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. There's a lot of potential things we can do to change different, many different ways, right? So it's really an open modular system.